Hello, I'm Dr. Thomas Hitchcock, and welcome to this episode of our series, Beauty and the Bacteria, an exploration into the world of the skin microbiome. In this series, we're taking a closer look at the entangled nature of our skin's relationship to the microbes that live on and in the skin, and how that affects our lives from birth till death. This is our final episode of the three Ps of skin microbiome-related products, prebiotics, probiotics, and postbiotics. Today, we'll be talking about postbiotics, and if they're really just the waste of the microbiome, or much more. Let's begin. If you turn over a container of skincare and see the words ferment or lysate on the ingredients list, you've likely found a product with postbiotics. Now, this might be confusing to some of you, as many of the examples of skincare that claim that they contain probiotics actually contain postbiotics in the form of either bacterial ferment or the soup that the bacteria has grown in and released metabolites into, or a bacterial lysate, which are the contents of a given bacterial cell. Think of cracking an egg open. The lysate is like all that's in the inside. Postbiotics can actually be quite a complex mixture of substances, from small molecules to enzymes that a micro might secrete, either as a waste product of a metabolism or as a means for some sort of biological function to establish its niche in the microbiome and often to protect itself. An example of this is the postbiotics that are secreted by our good friend the C. acnes defendants, which is a beneficial strain of C. acnes. This little guy has been shown to secrete a complex mixture of metabolites, including substances that are anti-inflammatory in nature, substances such as fatty acids that modulate skin pH, and powerful antioxidants that allow this facultative anaerobe, or oxygen-phobic microbe, to venture out into the skin's surface and still thrive. So the postbiotic that they produce protects them and your skin at the same time. And as a result, the more C. acnes defendants that there are in the skin, the more the oils of the skin are filled with those substances. However, the metabolites of microbes are extremely strain specific. And not only that, it is specific to the environment and the food source that the microbe is given. So a microbe that is grown in a commercial fermenter that is only given, say, glucose as a carbon source may produce a very different metabolite profile than that of a microbe that grows in soil or on the skin. So scientists are exploring how to produce the ferment products with the best constituents so that they can place them into products that have the most benefit for the skin. Now, as we've discussed in our probiotics episode, while attempting to place a lactobacillus strain on your face may not make the most sense because it would have a hard time engrafting, the ferment of certain lactobacillus species have been studied and suggested to contain skin-healthy substances that can help with skin health. But we do need to be careful about assuming that all lysates and ferments are good for the skin. Lysates can contain pieces of microbial cell walls called lipopolysaccharides, or LPS. If you recall from our Microbiome 101 episodes, LPS can be inflammatory and could potentially negate any benefit from other components of the lysate. Additionally, ferment products of certain microbes can be quite toxic. Cholera, anyone? Maybe some botulism, perhaps. The good news is that if a microbe is a true probiotic, it likely produces a postbiotic of some form, depending on what the manufacturers fed the microbe or microbes that made it. So when you see a ferment or lysate in your skincare, look at the strain and see whether it is a strain that would be considered a probiotic. That will help you to determine if its metabolites are something that you want to spend your hard-earned dollars on, and even more importantly, if you even want to put it on your skin. And that concludes our discussion on the three Ps of the skin microbiome, prebiotics, probiotics, and postbiotics. We hope that this has been helpful for your understanding of what exactly may and may not be worth you spending your hard-earned dollars on, and what potential we should expect for taking skincare 
and turning it into true biome care in the not too distant future. As always, we love hearing from you. So please send your questions, comments, or topics that you'd like us to cover to comments at beautyandthebacteria.com. You can also follow us on social media listed here to watch our Q&A sessions, interviews, or to send us your questions, and to receive updates on this series as well as other news and information on skin microbiome initiatives at Crown. So from all of us here at Crown Laboratories, thank you for watching. And remember, you have billions of bacteria on your face, and we think that's awesome. Goodbye for now.